everyone, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin, and today we're going to start Act 3, Blue Moon, of our three-act series for Fire Team Zero. Now, before we jump in, I do want to mention that I did just have my third child. I have my third son, Tyler. Here's a picture of him. Yeah, he was born on March 23rd of 2020. Pretty exciting. So sorry if my videos are coming out a little bit less than often than normal, <laughs> what you've seen before. Uh, I just have a, a little bit more responsibility right now with three boys in the house. Oh boy, I feel bad for my wife. <laughs> um, but I also just wanted to mention that, you know, during this tough time of everything that's going on in the world with the COVID-19, I just want to thank everyone who continues to watch our videos and and I'm praying for everyone. I hope everyone's okay. And I just hope everyone that we can get through this and we will be better for it. That's my hope. So with that, I'm hoping that these videos can kind of help if you're feeling down. You can watch these and just enjoy them and have a great time. That's what I'm hoping for. So let's start in for Act 3. Here's our mission briefing, Abe's Log. The portal was at the bottom of a set of stairs leading into the hospital basement. There's no electricity down here, so... The only illumination was the faint blue flickering below us. Shad did some recon and refused to tell us what he saw when he came back. Instead, he made us creep down the stairs with him to see for ourselves. And he was right. We never would have believed him. There was an entire village down there under the hospital, with the biggest moon you've ever seen hanging over it, in a sky that couldn't possibly have existed. The moonlight was a sticky blue, and everything smelled like damp rot. We stepped through. The Fetch's skull crumbled to dust when we arrived, completely drained of whatever force animated it. I guess the Harvester never planned on being used as a taxi. As soon as we passed through that portal, it vanished behind us. I decided to worry about that later, since it would only matter if we lived. In the distance, uh, we could see a swarm of fetches flying around a towering heap of bones like flies on a carcass. At first, we thought this was their stockpile of bones, but Frank got a good look at it through his telescope. The mass of bones wasn't just moving, it was growing and taking on the shape of a man. So I believe this mission goal is actually incorrect. Destroy the tanker trucks and kill the mother of worms. I think that's actually from the uh, scenario before this one. So I think what our goal is here, because I actually haven't played this. I was going to play this with Berndt, and then all the COVID stuff happened, and Berndt hasn't been over since then. <laughs> uh, so we're just going to play this blind, and I have no idea. I, I would say our mission goal is probably to complete these recon cards that we have. There's these three specific recon cards we're going to find. We're probably going to have to find those and then take the boss down. We'll have one bone fetch per hero and one skin fetch per hero already on the board. I spawn those. We have in our reserve pool the harvester, which is that big boss. Uh, we're still using the twist deck. I've already set that up. Now what we get to do is we receive two upgrades and three focus cards for this mission. We also need to set aside the Swarm of Skulls, Pillar of Spines, and Thicket of Hands tokens. When you locate one of those discovery cards, place the, the corresponding token in its location to indicate where it was discovered. Probably because it's important, I don't really know. <laughs> I'm excited. I also really think this map looks cool. Uh, we look like we're in a in basically a deserted city. You can see there's the roads, and there's some houses. I think there's a car somewhere. Yep, here's a car right here. It's kind of cool. So... All right, let's see what we picked out for our characters. For Sunny, we're grabbing the ability Field Tourniquet. So this one is once per mission, you may flip the lucky coin to, as heads up as an action. <laughs> that is basically our fail safe. And we're going to grab four cards of the M1 Mercendary device. This one, it's uh, two grenades. It gets in one auto success. And we can play this uh, before an ally performs an attack to reduce the resistance of all monsters that attack by two. So I'm placing four of those, that's called splash damage, placing four of those in Don's deck. Maxine's going to be our shotgun expert. So when you perform a bullet attack, you may distribute the total damage of your attack across any or all monsters in the target location. Kind of cool. And then we also have here our um, Fletch, Fletch, Fletchetti rounds, I don't know how to say that. It's just four bullets, rolling four dice, and we can also play when an ally is moving to increase their speed by one. Once again, I love being able to move a lot, so I, I love having that ability. For Rat, we have Second Wind. If you don't move on your turn, you may perform two actions instead of one. So what I'm thinking I can do is spend his ability to do double time to move four, but that takes an action, and then get into the right spot. And then he can do two actions there, like maybe do a search and an attack, something like that. I don't know. 
And then we have decapitate. <laughs> so this is three fists with an automatic two successes or range zero, play after taking damage from a minion or elite to kill that monster. So yeah, retribution, get hit, done, take them out. Finally, for our marksman, we have breath control. If you don't move on your turn, increase the attack strength of the bullet attack you perform by one. So not only will he be reducing the resistance, but it'll also be increasing the dice that he's rolling. Love that, but he can't move. His upgraded card will be the boat tail round. So this is three bullets with one auto success. He can play this before an ally performs a brawl attack to reduce the target's resistance to that attack to zero. I'm doing a lot of re uh, reducing the attack to zero cards because I know what the harvester looks like. Here's his card. He's got resistance of five for close combat, four for bullet, and four for his grenade. <laughs> yeah, and his health is seven. So that's having to do like 11 hits. But Based on how I understand these cards, I can still play these against the boss and reduce his resistance to zero, which is totally worth it. Here we have our two objectives. We have shut down the portal network. The ground is a carpet of bones as far as we can see in every direction. In some places, the bones rise up into strange configurations that spew red fire into shimmering holes in the air. Henry thinks those are the first linkages to the bone repositories that the fetches have prepared to become extensions of the huge creature's body. We need to destroy them. That one's going to take three objective tokens. Over here we have the Defeat the Harvester, and that one just says, It's a towering cyclone of burning human remains. How do you kill something like that? I guess it's time to find out. When the shutdown the portal network objective is completed, spawn the harvester in its designated location and activate it immediately. Defeat it to win the game. So we'll have to do this one first, probably getting those objectives done by finding those specific recon cards, and then we'll bring that one out and have to defeat the harvester. Don't forget that both of our specialists are self-sufficient. So that says you do not have to advance the threat track due to the last hero guarding the lower specialist being knocked down. Same thing for our psychic specialist. To start the game, before we draw our hands up, we get to decide, because of Moxie's special ability called a sign point, we get to decide who the first player is going to be. I'm definitely going to have Don. I'm really hoping that I can get some bombs. I'm going to blow up that location that is uh, spawn point seven, and you'll see why in a second. Let's go ahead and draw up our hands. Here we have our hands all set up. Let's go ahead and start with Sunny. To start Sunny's turn, we're going to go ahead and have him spend two of his movement to move into this difficult terrain location, bringing Patty with him. Oh, you know what? Actually, he's adjacent to Patty, and so we're going to leave Patty here because that way someone else can take him. So with Patty being in an adjacent location, we can go ahead and search this for free. We'll draw that top recon card, and we have Deja Vu. The old rucksack has nothing useful inside, so you toss it aside. You wipe the sweat from your eyes and start to walk away, only to trip over the rucksack at your feet. A chill goes down your spine as you search it again. <laughs> Return the top card from your discard pile to your hand. Well, that would have been cool if we had something in our discard pile, but we don't. But we'll discard that. Within range two of us, we have one of those skin fetches and two of the bone fetches. That is a perfect place to throw some grenades. <laughs> Don't forget the skin fetches, they have six health with two resistance against our uh, grenade cards. The two cards we're going to play are the wire wrapped charge. It's normally only a range of one, but we have our pitching arm so we can increase the range by one to two. And we're going to roll eight dice. We're looking for eight successes. And Henry is within range one, so we can re-roll one die. Eight dice, the most you can roll. Let's see. Oh, three, three, four, five, six. Okay, we only have six. Oh man, we need eight. So I'm going to take one of these and re-roll it. Come on. Seven, eight. <laughs> Boom. Okay. We just took out all three of these guys in spawn point seven. Now these two will respawn. So we'll grab our dice to respawn them. They're going to spawn in locations 11 and nine. 11 and nine were great locations. 11's way over here and nine is way over there. So then for Frank's turn, remember he was our weakest link from before. <laughs> I think I'm going to have him do a bullet attack on this guy. Now, because this guy is in cover, I think I'm actually going to have him move into this spot. Normally I'd attack him range, but this way he does not get the benefit of cover since we're in this same location. So we're going to move into here. We're going to attack him. Assuming we can take him out, we'll then be able to do a free search here because we're within range one of Patty. 
We have our dead eye ability, which reduces the resistance to bullet attacks by one. So all we need is one success. So I'm just going to use this hydrostatic shock uh, card. We're rolling three dice, just looking for one bullet. Boom, done. So we will respawn that in location 10. We can't do that because that's where our demolition expert is. So it'll be in location five. That's another great spawn. That's way over here. Then because we are one away from where Patty is, let's go ahead and search uh, this location. We'll flip our second recon card and we have the swarm of skulls. Six burning skulls hurtle through the air in front of you, each leaving a trail of red fire in its wake. Above them, a portal yawns wide. Place the Swarm of Skulls token on this location and six intel tokens on this card. As an action, a hero in this location may roll one attack die per token on this card. For each die which rolls no bullet hits, they take one damage as a skull slams into them. For each die which rolls any bullet hits, remove a token from this card. A marksman hero, <laughs> hey, uh, hero may reroll one die. When the last token is removed from this card, place it on the uh, place it on the objective. <laughs> cool. We'll place these six intel tokens here, and we're trying to get rid of them as soon as we can. So that's totally going to change what I was planning on doing. I'm going to have to decide, do I want to have my leader and my combat specialist go in there and do that? I don't know. Let's see. Well, I had a different plan for my combat specialist. I was going to have him go out there and maybe try and soak some attacks for everyone. But I think it makes the most sense. We're going to have him move in here, and I think we'll have him take Henry with us. And let's go ahead and do the action here and try and roll some dice and see if we can get rid of some of those objective tokens. So our hero in this location can roll one attack die per token on this card. There's six tokens. For each die which rolls no bullet hits, they take one damage. Okay, so let's see. Let's roll these up. We have no bullet and no bullet. Okay, so we're going to take two damage. Then what it says, um, for each die which rolls no bullet hits, take one damage as the skull slams into them. Ow. <laughs> for each die which rolls any bullet hits, remove a token from this card. Sweet. So we just removed four out of the six tokens. I was thinking this was going to be hard, but this actually, there's bullets on a lot of these. So uh, all four of these out of the six we can remove. We only have two left, but our combat specialist is taking two damage. Out of these five cards, I feel like the point blanks... I don't really like them as much, so I'm going to go ahead and discard those, leaving these three in hand. As much as I'd like to have our leader do this as well, and maybe we could even complete this one, because this is one of the three objectives we need to complete, I think it's better to come over here and not leave our demolition expert all alone, because we have that skin fetch over there. And that skin fetch over there might potentially even pull him farther this way, depending upon what happens, and he's going to get totally removed from our group. So I'm going to go ahead and move into here. I have to bring Patty with me. And unfortunately, that takes our two movement. I don't think we're going to do anything. So that's going to end our round. We're going to go ahead now and uh, activate enemies. First step during the enemy phase, we're going to move up our threat track by one. Let's now activate our enemies. We'll start with the minions. So we'll start with this one here. We'll roll. He gets his special ability, which doesn't do anything. One, two. Remember, if there's uh, if it's diagonally connected, they can still move. You can see here, though, these are white borders. So that's uh, essentially a building. So this one's going to actually have to move out the door here. So we'll do that one next. He'll get three movement. One, two, and then three. Yeah, because that's like, the easiest then this guy is going to go, he gets three movement, one, two, three, and then finally this one, uh, just one, two, and anyone in his location would potentially take a point of unblockable damage. Now let's go ahead and activate the two skin fetches here, and then we got the one that's close to the demolitions guy, which we'll do in a second. Nothing! One, two, his attack range is only, what, one? Awesome. Can't get to them yet. <laughs> Uh, that one will activate, will be three. Let's see, one, two, three, and within range one. Nope, can't hit anyone. Unfortunately, we have our skin fetch up there, and yeah, he's going to move right into their space. One, two, three, and he's going to attack. Now, normally, he would attack the demolition expert, but I'm going to have Moxie jump in the way because I don't really want Sonny to discard his cards. He's got a tactics in his hand. What do you guys say we be a little bit risky though? Let's use our Overwatch ability here, which says once per round, you may perform an attack action against a monster as a reaction when it moves into your location. Let's see if we can blow this thing to hell. We're going to play all three of these cards. 
three, six, seven, eight dice with two auto successes. And if I remember right, he's got two resistance, so we need eight successes, but we're looking for bullets. Bullets, it's likely we're going to get them. We do not have Henry bias, so we don't get a reroll. Here's six dice plus the two in my hand. And remember, we have two auto successes, so we're just looking for six successes to take this guy out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Took him out before he could hit us. Great. We then activated all the enemies on the board. I have two skin fetches that are off the board, so I'm going to spawn both of those at one and seven. Overall, I was quite happy with that round. We have two of our spawn points already searched. We already found one of the three that we need. And this one's close to being done. It only has two tokens on there. I think this next round, we're going to have to be very careful, though, because I've got these guys within range. Actually, two skin fetches that are going to be within range of us. That's going to be brutal. And we've got two skin fetches in range of our guys over here. Now, these guys are going to want to move. So it's just the question, what am I going to do? I don't really want to split up the team. But if I split up the team, <laughs> don't split up the team, Colin. But if I do, I can have these guys work on this while they push themselves towards that spawn point. Yeah, I don't know. We're going to see what we're going to do. Starting with that tactics phase, the first thing we need to do is decide who our first player is going to be. That will definitely be Rat. The reason being, I'm going to have Sonny play his tactical response. We've seen this card before. We're going to go ahead and kill up to four minions and elites anywhere on the board. And I'm just going to take out all four elites. Why not? All four of those elites walked right into our trap. Awesome. That means everyone except for Sunny here will draw up to five cards. And then with that, we'll go ahead and have Rat activate. We keep talking about how important it is that we stay together. So what I think I'm going to do with Rat, I could try and continue this, but our marksman gets to reroll one die. I am only rolling two dice. I'm really hoping he's going to be able to take care of this. So what I'm going to have Rat do is use his double time so he can move four spaces. Um, that is going to cost him his action, but he's going to go one, two, three, four. That way, these guys, when they get closer to him, he can help them get in there because of all of his awesome uh, reaction cards. Help them get in there so they can search, and then we can get to this location as well and search. And then I'm just going to have Frank lagging behind as usual. <laughs> maybe if he can do this, he'll maybe start trying to move over here. Uh, that's the hope at least. Our next player that will go will be Moxie. Rat will go ahead and play his navigation card here. It's within range two of his ally. Play when an ally is moving to allow them to move one additional space, ignoring difficult terrain. Moxie will be able to move three, one, two to come into here. She gets a free search action. So we'll do that first, and then she can potentially move a third space and check out that number three if we want to. It all depends upon what we find in this recon card. We have the Thicket of Hands. Oh, we've already found the second one. You approach a field of skeletal arms and hands rising from the ground, all swaying as if pushed by an unseen wind. Balls of red fire ignite in random hands, who then throw it skyward into the portal above. You get closer, and hands burst from the earth beneath your feet and seize you. Place the Thicket of Hands token in this location. You may not move or take actions until another hero destroys it by inflicting eight bullets or four bomb damage on it. When they do, place an intel token on this object on the objective. <laughs> well, we do have our demolition expert that's close. Bullets, though, that would be all our marksmen. I can't. I'm, I guess I had two right next to each other. Nice. Sunny is next, and while he is activating, we're gonna have our combat specialist play at squad navigation. Play when an ally is moving to allow them to move one additional space, ignoring difficult terrain. You may move one space as well, also ignoring difficult terrain. This means Sonny can move three, one, two, three to here. Our combat specialist, because I believe these hands are just taking on Maxine, right? <laughs> she is totally stuck. Then we'd have our combat specialist move here, bring Patty with. So then the first thing I'm going to do is do our free search here. And then hopefully we can throw a bomb at this. We'll see. I have to decide. We'll give our recon card a flip. And we have battle instincts. You look at the battle unfolding around you with an experienced eye. The ebb and flow of events unfold in your mind and you begin to plan your next moves. Look at the top five cards of your deck and put them back in any order. Oh, okay. One, two, three, four, five. Let's grab all five. Let's look at them. Okay, I've got fists that I don't really want. Look at oh, another four bomb and another two bomb. I'm going to put these three 
up top. Oh yeah, look at that. Put the fist in the bottom. Play before a minion activates red all. I mean, that's cool. But yeah, I like these better. I like blowing up stuff, especially with having to help Maxine. This will make sure that we can blow up those hands and free her. Now, Sonny only has two cards in his hand, and we have an enemy that's for sure going to get into our location. And unfortunately, our combat specialist won't be able to stop him from attacking us because those guys attack with bombs. But I still think it might be worth the chance. Or Yeah, I think it is. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> uh, the other thing I'm not sure about is when we're playing this, and we're throwing bombs into that location, normally Moxie would take damage. I think she will. If we had used bullets, she won't take damage because that's directed just at the hands. But since we're using grenades, I believe she'll actually take damage based on what we roll too. That's how I'm going to play it. If I'm wrong, let me know. But what we're going to do is we're just going to play our wiretapped charge. This could turn out poorly for Moxie. I guess we'll see. Let's roll them up. We have three plus one. Wow. I mean, can you ask for anything better than that? That's four. She's going to have to discard four cards from how I'm thinking of how this works. So the one card she's going to keep is her tactics response, because why not? Uh, she's going to discard these four. But we're also going to blow to smithereens those hands. I'm telling you, our demolition expert is awesome. He's my favorite character. I love, I love throwing grenades. <laughs> So we're going to remove this token. This is gone. And we're going to place our first intel token on our objective. We're trying to shut down the portal network. Finally, we're going to have Frank activate here. We're going to try and get rid of these skulls. We're rolling two dice because there's two objective tokens on that card still. We are the marksmen, so we do get to re-roll one of these. But we don't have to. Both of them have bullets. That will remove both of these. Wow, you guys, we are doing wonderfully. That is our second objective token on shut down the portal network. We just need one more. We just need to find that final, that final card and then resolve whatever it is. And then the big man comes out. <laughs> we are most definitely going to move two locations. So we're going to move one, two. I wish we could attack over here, but we have already used our action. So that's all we can do. And just so I don't forget to play this, I am going to have Frank play this card. Play it before a minion activates to prevent all minions in that location from moving, but not attacking. So that bone fetch that's two spaces away will not be able to move this turn, and they would only attack at range zero, so he's not going to be able to attack anything. The one I'm talking about is this one right here, range two, one, two. That was totally key because that's going to save our uh, leader who only has one card left in her hand. It's also saving Sunny who only has one card left in his hand as well. Okay, we've moved our threat track up. Let's activate the three other minions on the board. We've got one minion that could get into the location with Frank. One, two, we'll roll. It definitely does. It's going to move into here. It rolls, I got to remember, it's been a while. It rolls one die looking for bombs. And it rolls two bombs, so he's going to take two damage. Let's see. I think we're going to drop the duplex round and the boat tail round. Both of those will get discarded. Uh, it's not great, but he still has two cards in hand. Uh, then we've got this one activating. Oh, this one can get there. One, two, and of course it gets a move. Three, it's going to move in there. <laughs> Don't kill him. Oh, yes. Okay. No bombs, so it doesn't hurt him. And then this one over here will go one, two, and roll. Gets a third movement, three, one space away. We'll then go ahead and spawn all four skin fetches. We have a 10 and a three. Uh, the three doesn't work, so let me re-roll that. A 10 and 11, both of those work. And then we'll grab to roll for the other two, and that's a three and a six. The three doesn't work. Uh, the three doesn't work. What is with three? <laughs> A three doesn't work. A two will work. Well, I can just barely get it all in camera. We got a skin fetch here, one way down here, one way down here, and one here. Our biggest problem is our marksman is stuck now. Until we get rid of these, at least one of these bone fetches, he cannot move out of this location, which isn't the end of the world. We should be able to do that, especially with some of the tactics cards that we have. I have some ideas. Uh, but overall, I'm feeling like what we're going to try and do is move this way. We've got two spawn points over here. So start rushing this way. Maybe try and take out that skin fetch and get these two location or two spawn points within the next one to two rounds. If those aren't the right locations, we're going to have to move a lot to get to the bottom half of this 
map. And I'm really hoping I don't have to go to this one because I'm going to have to go into a whole building. But I guess we'll see what we get. Starting round three, choosing who is going to be first, definitely Sonny. We know he's going to get some bombs. I'm going to try and throw those into that location six, blow up that skin fetch there and that bone fetch so that our combat specialist can hopefully go there and search. What I am going to do though, during the play a tactics response, we're going to play Wrath of God. This does mean that our marksman will only have one card in hand, but I still think it's worth it. Inflict a total of 12 damage in any combination of monsters in your sector, ignoring resistance. A sector is your map tile, so we can take out 1, 2, 3, plus 6, that's 9. It ignores resistance. All these guys are toast. These bone fetches don't spawn until the end of the round because they were destroyed during the tactics phase, not during the hero phase. <laughs> I love that. If you've watched my other two plays, you know that I've given Frank a pretty hard time. That totally made up for it. That and getting rid of those skulls. <laughs> Everyone else, let's drop to five cards. We can then go ahead and start with Sunny. Sunny is going to go ahead and throw some grenades into location six or spawn point six. He's going to use three out of his five cards for this, but look at this. Two, four, plus four is eight dice with two auto successes all range two thanks to his pitching arm ability. This is rolling eight dice. We already have two successes. We need eight to take out that skin fetch. So I'm just looking for six more. Oh, wow. Three, six, nine, 12. <laughs> yeah, sayonara skin fetch and this bone fetch. Although the bone fetch will respawn. Just don't roll a six. We rolled a 12. That'll work way at the edge of the, of the board. Great. We're then going to have Rat play his navigation card, which will allow an ally to move one additional space, ignoring difficult terrain. He's going to use that for Sunny. So Sunny will be able to move three spaces, ignoring difficult terrain. Sunny will move his two spaces, bringing Patty with him. Normally that would cost him two move to move into this location, but thanks to what Rat played for him, he can ignore that difficult terrain. And he's bringing Patty with him so he can do a free search. Let's look at that next recon card. And we have the Miasmic Chill. Fog escapes your lip as the temperature plummets. Your hands go numb and you can barely think. Place this card on top of your focus cards. You may not use your focus abilities while you have it. At the start of the tactics phase, discard this card. Oh. Okay, well at least we already went. And at the start of the next tactics phase, we'll get rid of this so we can still have our pitching arm. But man, that would have been really bad. <laughs> Frank is next to go. Unfortunately, he only has one card in his hand. We've got two skin fetches here who are very likely going to move all the way up to here and attack. So I think I'm going to just have him move one, two, just to kind of get him closer to the team. But I'm not going to have him move into where he could get into range. <laughs> Instead, when we now move to, oh, I think it's our combat specialist that's next. Yes. So I'm going to have our combat specialist go one, two, and we'll go ahead and spend his action to do a recon here. This will be recon number six already. We have dazed. You clutch your head as a deafening howl cuts right through you. Mercifully, it stops before your eardrums burst. You look around in a daze. What were you doing a moment ago? You can't remember. Discard one card at random. Oh... Okay, I mean, not terrible, but not great. We only have four cards in hand, so I'll take them, and let's go ahead and randomly shuffle them, and let's discard this one, and, okay, decapitate. Oh, I want to decapitate! Oh, that's a bummer. That was what I was going to use when those skin fetches came up. They'd attack us, and we just kill them. Oh, well, we now have a tough question. Our combat specialist could allow Maxine here to get an additional movement, and she could get into this location here and search it. She will de definitely, though, be in range of not one, but two skin fetches. <sighs> uh, if she's over here, she's likely going to be in range as well. The advantage of doing here is we'd at least get to do another search. But it could be something bad. <sighs> It's just, do we want to take that risk? Also, she's then farther away from the team. I mean, our demolitions expert is way over there. Do we want to do it? Well, wh wh you know, why not? One, two, let's go ahead. <laughs> let's go ahead and do it. It might be risky, but when you take those risks, a lot of times they pay off. And if it doesn't, that's why we have our field tourniquet. So we can flip that coin back over. <laughs> so we'll have our uh, combat specialist play navigation. So our ally can move one additional space, ignoring difficult terrain. 
anybody who plays that combat specialist and doesn't grab those additional moves, I don't know why you wouldn't. <laughs> they are so incredibly powerful in this game. So yeah, that was our move. We could attack, but no, I'm going to do the search as our action. Here's to hoping this is a good gear. We have Signal Mirror. The steel mirror has been scored and warped until once bright surface is now no longer reflective. As you sweep the ruined face past your teammates, you suddenly understand what they need you to do. Perhaps the old relic doesn't yet know it's finished. You may make use of the lower specialist ability at range 2 as if they were adjacent to you. Oh, that's cool. So that would mean that we could search for free at range 2 instead of range 1. Nice. We've now ended the hero activation. Let's go ahead and move to drawing our first twist. And we have tough. All minions and elites have the resistance to all attack types increased by one. Pfft. Minions and elites. At least it doesn't include the harvester. Thank goodness. But yeah, that's going to make those skin fetches even harder to kill. We'll now move to activating the enemies. We'll start with our one minion that's on the board. We'll roll an additional movement. Now, if you look here, one, two, three, four one two three four they're both the same distance away don don or sunny is the first player so it's definitely going to move one closer to him and yeah they move three whoops one two three okay they normally move two now we're gonna have the skin fetches go yay <laughs> so normally they only move one i think i might have messed that up the last time but that's okay we'll start with this one he moves one we're gonna roll and he gets his additional movement which means he'll move two into here He'll roll two dice looking for fists. We're hoping he gets no fists. And no, he gets two hits. So we'll go ahead and have uh, Moxie discard these two cards. Okay. Then we're going to have this skin fetch activate. He's going to move at least one, uh, two. He's also going to move into this location. Oh, man. She has two skin fetches on her. And they're going to roll. He also deals two damage. So she's going to lose her center mass and her um, fletch, I don't know how to say that, fletch letty rounds. Both of those are also going to be discarded. She's got one card left. It's her tactics card, uh, her two-handed swing. Now, I could have done her overwatch, but with them having plus one resistance to everything, and she did not have great cards that combined together to give her a strong single attack, I thought all she would do is miss, and then they would still attack her. So I think this was better this way. Finally, we'll do some spawning. We'll start with those minions. 12 and 1. Both of those work. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Moxie is in location 1, so we cannot do 1. We'll do 12. Two 12s. Okay. Then we've got one more minion, and that will be in location 4. And then we have two elites, so we'll put them back on the board at locations 10 and 8. Well, we're in a bit of a predicament. <laughs> These two skin fetches are going to be a pain. If Moxie was in here and our demolition expert was closer, he can maybe chuck some grenades over there. But if he does that, he's going to risk a KOing her, knocking her over. I think we're going to have to just spend some time trying to take them out and not even doing any searching this round. We're kind of far away from any spawn points anyways. We've got one that's over here, only two away from Moxie, but she's not moving. <laughs> So, yeah, we're definitely going to have her go last. We'll have everyone else try and come in here and help her out a little bit. To start off that tactics phase, we'll be able to discard this Maya Mismic Chill, thank goodness, from Sunny. And then we get to choose who our first player will be, and I believe we're going to have Rat. I'm hoping to have Rat come in and help Moxie out. That's the plan. Let's go ahead and draw up. I'm not going to use our two-handed swing. No, we're going to keep that card in our hand. I don't need the tactical response. So let's draw up to five cards. Looks like we're all set. Let's go ahead and start off with Rat. We're going to go ahead and have Rat move himself into here with Moxie, and I think we're going to try and attack one of these skin fetches. Right now, those skin fetches have resistance of four against physical melee attacks, but we're still going to try our darndest. <laughs> we're going to roll eight dice because the max we can roll is eight, uh, and we have two auto successes with this. And then um, we're also going to have Moxie, Play this reaction card, so she can play when an ally performs an attack action, they retain that card instead of discarding it, so we can keep our Reaper card in our hand. We need a total of 10 hits, but we already have 2 successes, so we're looking for 8 hits here. We don't get a reroll, so it is what it is. Let's roll them up. 
we have oops 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 yeah that will take out one of the skin fetches just what i was hoping for this will allow moxie to be able to move out of this space one two to come over here and do a search we got to find that last recon card let's see what she finds she gets a floating rift. You jump back with a yell as a monster appears right in front of you. Instinctively, you attack, just as the monster vanishes. As a free action, you may perform an immediate attack against a monster anywhere on the battlefield as if it were in your location. Ooh. Well, my hand is not great. I don't think I built her deck that well, so I don't have a lot of cards of the same type of attack. And I don't want to take out a bone fetch because they could end up appearing right next to me. So I'm not going to attack anything. We're just going to move right over to Sunny. Sunny's going to go ahead and do two movement, one, two, to move to here, and then he's going to try and blow this guy up. He is in cover. You know what, actually, no, yeah, yeah, let's do that. We're going to do this, and do we want to attack, or we could stay there, and that actually protects Moxie from, there are two bone fetches that are right over here, and they are three away from Moxie, but now they're only two away from Sunny. Sunny, though, potentially could get attacked by three, hmm. Let me check his cards. I've got a way to prevent this minion from activating, so I think I'm actually not going to attack. I'm going to stay right where I am. I'm, of course, not in cover. Uh, it doesn't matter. These guys all attack uh, at zero range, so the cover doesn't help anyways. So I'm not going to attack. I'm just going to stay here, drawing these guys away from Moxie. For Frank's turn, we're going to go ahead and take a shot at this skin fetch. We're not going to move, so that allows us to use our breath control. That means we'll roll one additional die because we're using a bullet attack. However, the skin fetch is in cover, so then we have to reduce the dice we use by one because he's in cover. So those two cancel each other out. We do have Deadeye, so that when we perform a bullet attack, we can reduce the target's bullet resistance by one. So the skin fetch's uh, bullet resistance is two plus the one from the, th from the toughness, so that's three, minus one back down to two. So he has a total of two resistance. We have to get a total of eight successes. With our two cards here, we'll roll seven dice, we get one auto success, and we get a reroll, plus Henry's in our space, we get a second reroll. We need a total of eight bullets, minus one because we have one auto success. So we're looking for seven bullets. Uh, let's see, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, we took that skin fetch out. Uh, Rat is very thankful. <laughs> we'll move to the threat phase, we'll move up our threat track by one. As we activate all the minions, we're going to play this from our Demolitions Expert. Play before a minion activates to prevent all minions in that location from activating. The one I'm looking at, since it has to be at range 1, is this one. I'd love to do this one, but they're at range 2. So we're not going to have to activate that one. Let's go ahead and start with this one. This one's going to go 1, 2. It's going to move into Rat's location. And it's just going to roll one die with bombs. It gets no successes. Great. Okay, then over here, this one's going to move one, two. It's in uh, Donnie's space. It's additional move. It's going to get attacked for bombs. Oh, two bombs. So he's going to have to discard. Let's see. He's going to discard both of these, Concussive and Haymaker. So those are gone. And then this one's going to move in. Oops, we got to roll the green die. Uh, he gets his special, which is actually great. He just has to discard one card. We'll discard this one because uh, it just does one damage to everyone that's in that location. We'll then activate the skin fetch up here. He'll move one. He gets one additional movement. Oh, that's a bummer. So now he's within range one of our combat specialist, so he can attack. He rolls for two fists. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> look at that. No fists at all. He totally whiffed him. That's amazing. However, we are going to have this skin fetch go. He's going to move one. We'll roll. Okay, he gets his special ability. His special ability is his attack range is increased by one. Well, he can already attack our leader. So he's going to roll two dice. Let me see. Does she have anything to activate? No, I took a look. Nothing. Nothing that's really helpful. Uh, she'll get hit for two points of damage. So we'll drop, let's see, we'll do drop stock strike and a pump action. So these two will get discarded. She also, because she took damage, gets pulled into his location because he has a hook. Any hero damaged by this monster is moved to its location. That's still okay. She can run away and still hopefully check out that location. We'll end by spawning the two skin fetches. And we've got a 3 and a 12. Let's see if that works. I just checked and they both absolutely work. So we're good there. 
Well, I think it's safe to say I spread the team a little too thin. <laughs> Look at this. We've got our demolition expert way over here. We've got Rat here. We've got our leader here. And we've got Frank way back here. So I think the next thing we need to do is get everybody over here to help our demolition expert. He's got three bone fetches and a skin fetch that's coming at him. So I got Frank that can come over. We've got our combat specialist that should be able to come over. And I am hoping that our leader will be able to come over here and at least search this location. To start this tactics phase, I do think I'm going to go ahead and keep Rat as our first player. And then what I think I'm going to do is I am going to have uh, Moxie play her regroup. This says that each hero may immediately move two spaces, starting with the player to your left. Sonny literally can't move, but Frank can. So he's going to move one, two. He's going to move all the way over here so he can hopefully help him. Rat can go ahead and move two, one, two. And he's going to meet up with our leader, one, two, who can also move out of this space. Because remember, one enemy doesn't stop you from moving. It's if ever there's two or more. So this way, at least I've got two teams of two. They can help each other out. I'm hoping to search here and maybe take out that skin fetch over there to help alleviate anything going on here. And then I've got my final two searches here. So I can do this search, then move to this search, and then if I need to, go to this one. This does mean, though, I need to be very careful with Moxie. She only has one card in hand. <laughs> Everyone else will draw up to five. Looks like we're set to go. Let's start with Rat. Starting with our combat specialist, we're going to go ahead and flip this and do a recon. We'll flip our gear card, hoping it's a good gear. We have resonating crystals. Lights dance and swirl in perfect synchronicity inside the two cloudy red crystal shards. Patty keeps one and places the other in your palm where it buzzes against your skin like an angry insect. You may make use of the psychic specialist ability at range two as if they were adjacent to you. Wow, that's the second one of those. Cool. I mean, it's, it's a different type, but it does the same thing. Nice. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get into the face of this skin fetch. We'll move two right to here. Next is Moxie, and Moxie is just going to simply join him. Move two into here as well. Up here with Sunny and Frank, we're going to go ahead and have Sunny play or do a brawl attack on one of these guys. But before that, we're going to have Frank play one of his reactions. This is a body shot card. It allows us to play before an ally performs a brawl attack, and it's going to reduce the resistance of that uh, the bone fetch there to zero for that brawl attack. We're only going to be rolling two dice for this, but we only need one success against those bone fetches if they have zero resistance. Henry is also only one space away, so we do get a reroll if need be. We got one, two, three fists. That will take out one of these guys, but then we'll immediately have to respawn them. We'll spawn them in location one. Unfortunately, we now have two bone fetches within range two of Frank. That's no good. They're both going to get to him. So he's going to spend his movement to go one, two, and move himself here. He's then going to go ahead and play one of his cards to try and attack one of these bone fetches. I think he'll go ahead and attack the one that's not in cover, the one in the same location as Sunny. He's just going to play one card, his Hydrostatic Shock. He'll roll three dice for this. Because of their toughness, normally I need three total successes, but we get to reduce it by one because of our Deadeye ability. So we only need two successes and we get a reroll. Oh my gosh, good thing we get a reroll. Thanks to Henry. There it is. Two successes. Whew. So that will take out the one in Sunny's space. Then we're going to have to spawn it. Hopefully it'll be really far away. A three. Three is great. That's way up here. That's going to be out of range of anyone. So I think that's going to end our hero activation. Let's go and move to the threat phase. We'll move up the threat track to six. Next round, a second twist will come out. We'll go ahead and start with this minion. It's going to move into the location with Sunny. We'll roll. It gets additional movement, which doesn't do anything. It will attack Sunny for uh, nothing. No bombs. Great. This one's going to move one, two. It is going to get nothing. Awesome. One, two. That will get its special ability doing one point of damage to everyone in that location. Wow. One, two, and nothing. <laughs> oh, that was, that was great. Only one attack and it didn't even do any damage. Let's go ahead and activate the skin fetches next. This one will move one. We'll roll. Its range is two, one, two. No one's within range. This one will move one. Uh, its range is two, one, two. Still no one within range. These two will activate next. We'll roll this. Awesome. That one's only moving one. This one gets an additional move. It's not going to move anywhere. It's just going to attack our combat specialist. 
However, Rat was quite prepared. He is going to hamstring this skin fetch, and he's going to play before a minion or elite attacks to prevent it from attacking. Can't even do anything to him. And that will be it for this round. Overall, I'm quite happy. I'm so glad this guy didn't get two movement. That was insane. That's going to give us a little more leeway. We probably will still get attacked because I think what I need to do is get rid of this skin fetch so that then I can have our combat specialist or a leader search here. Very likely that's going to be the one that we need or it's this one. There's only two left, you guys. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be trying to blow up some of these bone fetches <laughs> with our demolition expert and just trying to survive. Let's jump to that next turn. To start our tactics phase, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have Frank be our first player this round. That's because I'm going to have Rat play his Predator ability. We have our tactical response, roll four attack dice against each monster in your sector, inflicting damage for any brawl hits rolled and ignoring all resistance. Awesome. Each time you kill one, you may move to its location. Our sector is swarming with enemies. We've got three bone fetches. I could take out all three of those. And then if we get lucky, we could take out the skin fetch. So I'll start with the three bone fetches. I'm probably not going to even move over there, even, even if I kill them. I'm just going to try and get that skin fetch at the end. <laughs> For those bone fetches, we just need one success to take them out. So let's see. Yep, that will take one out. No problem. Roll number two. That will take one out. <laughs> Roll number three. Uh, yep, that will take one out. And then this is our final roll. This is for the skin fetch. We need six successes. Come on, six successes. We have one, two. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely not taking that skin fetch out. We do have Henry next to us, but I don't think that we get to reroll a die using a tactical response because it's not an attack. Because it simply says you're inflicting damage, so I'm just going to say we can't reroll. So we didn't take out the skin fetch, but at least we totally took out for this round three bone fetches. That's also why I made Frank our first player, because I'm going to have him then try and shoot that skin fetch before Rat or Moxie goes, so that they can do that search. So everyone else, let's go ahead now and drop to five cards. Looks like we're set to go. Let's go ahead and take out that skin fetch. Starting with Frank, although I can shoot range really well, this guy is in cover. I don't want to lose one die, so I am going to spend one or spend my movement to move into here so I can attack him. That way he does not get the benefit of the cover. We're going to use our direct hit and our headshot here to roll a total of eight dice. We do have the benefit of reducing his resistance by one, so we need a total of eight successes on eight dice. We also get a free reroll thanks to Henry. Eight successes, you guys. That's what we're looking for. We only have six successes here. Let's see. Come on. A two bulleter. Seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> oh, that would have been really bad. If we had not taken that out, it would be a lot harder for us to do our search. Moving to Rat's turn, we get to use our resonating crystal because our a psychic specialist is Patty and he's within range too. So we actually can do a search for free. I'm actually super happy about that gear. <laughs> a lot of times the gear is hit or miss. That was definitely a hit here. We'll go ahead and flip our recon card. And we have Pillar of Spines. A thick column made of spine stands before you, pulsing with red fire that vanishes into the portal above it. The base is too thick to damage, but you might be able to break it higher up where it's thinner. Place the Pillar of Spines token in this location as an action. A hero in its location may attempt to destroy it by rolling six attack dice. They may reroll one die. A close combat hero may reroll two dice. Sweet. If they roll at least eight brawl hits, destroy the pillar and place an intel token on the objective. Otherwise, they take three damage from falling. <laughs> okay, so that means Rat, because he hasn't done his action, that is awesome. He can actually try this, and, and he gets the benefit of rerolling two dice. We're going to do that right away. We get to roll six dice. We're looking for eight brawl hits. Here are six dice. Rolling eight hits with six dice for brawl is actually kind of hard. Let's see how we do. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, we just need this one. We can reroll this. Come on, be a fist. Eight. Yes. That is our total eight. That means we just destroyed this. That means we place our third objective token here. If our coin had been flipped heads down, it would go back up to being heads up. But now we have to spawn the harvester. 
and I believe it says um, in the designated location and activates it immediately. Now all we have to do is defeat it to win. Now let me show you guys this harvester. He has seven health. He's a five four four. He does not get the toughness. I think the toughness was only for minions and elites. Yep, that's confirmed. Only for the minions and elites. Now, normally you'd think, we well, just to blow him up one time, right? Seven plus four, maybe our, uh, our Sonny could just blow him up. Well, here's the thing. Do you see that? That means we have to do that uh, equal to the amount of characters. So we have to blow him up four times. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be fun. Oh, and have you guys seen this mini? This mini looks phenomenal. Look at him. <laughs> Yeah, I am so going to die, but we'll have fun doing it. We're going to place them out on the board. We have to immediately activate them. So what I'm going to do, since I'm standing, I'm going to roll this die. Oh, bummer, you couldn't see it. But he rolled his walking symbol, so he'll be able to move one space. He has a range of three. He attacks with two dice looking for bombs. And it says here, the attack strength is reduced by one. That's if we got this ability, but it attacks everyone on the battlefield. And he also has coalesce. Each time a hero is knocked down, return one power token to the harvester. Basically, he's taking some of your essence and powering himself back up. Yeah, he's terrible. <laughs> so we're going to place him out on the board. He'll get to move one space towards us. And then anybody that's within range three, he'll be, well, one person within range three, he will attack them with two dice. So I maybe should have thought of the fact that he was going to spawn here. I should have known that. <laughs> I didn't take it into account. He's going to move right into here and he's going to attack our demolition expert with two dice let's see what he gets oh look at this no bombs no bombs he does no damage to sunny wow that's way better than what i was expecting now something i also want to mention now that the boss is on the board no more minions will spawn so the nice thing is is i've destroyed those uh, minions from before they will not respawn However, from how I understand it, we have one of those minion bone fetches. If I destroy it during the hero phase, it will continue to respawn because they don't spawn during the spawn step of the enemy phase. They just respawn during the hero phase. But because I took out three of those bone fetches during the tactics phase, they're off the board and they're not going to come back on. You guys let me know if that's right or wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's right. So what we have on the board right now are just three skin fetches. <laughs> just three and one bone fetch and of course our harvester and what we're gonna do we're moving to uh, moxie's turn yeah let's bring her in she's gonna take one step in here and try and shoot this thing let's send it to no man's land at least a little bit one fourth of it we're gonna play both of these cards they're both within range one rolling a total of seven dice and we get one auto success our marksman is going to be a spotter for her, and we're going to increase her attack strength by one, so she'll actually roll eight dice. We're also going to have our demolition expert play our splash damage. Play before an ally performs an attack to reduce the resistance of all monsters to that attack by two. So normally the harvester has a four defense or four resistance to bullets. He'll only have a two resistance for this round. Let's make sure we get this right. So that harvester has seven health and four resistance. We reduced, reduced that resistance by two, so it's a total of nine that we need to get for successes here. We have one auto success here, so that's eight. So we're just looking for eight successes on eight dice, and Henry is within one space, so we get to re-roll one. Bullets, bullets, bullets. That's a terrible roll. One, two, three, four. So even if I re-roll this one, which still wasn't, oh, didn't do anything. <laughs> I set up everything. I was thinking we were going to get one hit. We didn't. Didn't even touch him. Well, our final one to go is Sunny. And I still believe we can move out of our boss's location as long as there's not another enemy there. So we're going to take two steps back here. And we're going to chuck eight grenades into that location. We're just going to try and blow him to hell since we couldn't shoot him to hell. <laughs> that does mean that Moxie is going to most likely get attacked. But it is what it is. She's got three cards in hand. Hopefully that will be enough so she won't die. We need to get a total of 11 successes to be able to do one point of damage to him here. We're rolling eight dice. 11 damage on eight dice. And don't forget, we do get a reroll. It's slim. Uh, let's see if we can do it. We'll give him a roll. We've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, <laughs> I'm telling you, my demolition expert is amazing. That just blew off his left arm, let's say. Took off one piece three more to go. One fourth done, you guys. One fourth done. 
However, <laughs> our second twist is going to come out, and we have fetch. Whenever a secured spawn point is rolled while spawning a monster, hey, we can ignore that. We're not spawning monsters during the spawn phase. Awesome. That does nothing. Let's now go ahead and activate minions, followed by elites, followed by the boss. So first, our bone fetch moves two. Oh, dang. It's going to move three into our leader's location. I did not take that into account. But our demolition expert did smoke grenade. We're going to toss that in, play before a monster attacks an ally to reduce its attack strength by one. That makes him roll zero dice, so he cannot hit uh, Moxie. Whew. Let's go ahead and move our skin fetches next. So we'll move this guy one, and he gets an additional movement two. No one's within range yet. The other one is going to get two movement, one, two. And unfortunately, we do have one down here. He's going to move one. And dang, he gets one additional movement. He's going to move here. Our first player was Frank. That's another thing we were not taking into account. He's rolling two dice, attacking on fists. Uh, he gets two fists. <laughs> Frank has two cards. So Frank will discard both of these. He was going to use one of these to help Moxie. Can't do that anymore. And not only that, he's going to get pulled into this location. Oh, wait. You know what? This is under. He's in cover for this ranged attack. So if you're in cover, you roll one less die. So we only took one point of damage. So I'll go ahead and have him lose. I'm going to have him lose this one, although it's good. My other card can help Moxie still because we'll still be within range too. But we do still get pulled into this location. Well, now it's the fun part. We're going to have the boss man go. We're going to roll. He gets no special ability. So he's just going to attack. What's his range? I think his range is three. Yep. So his attack is range three. He's going to go ahead and attack Moxie. He'll roll two dice for this attack, looking for bombs. And let's see. He rolled three total bombs. Moxie actually does have three cards in hand. So I'm going to go ahead and discard them all because they're not great. And that way we can get some new ones. Uh, and yeah, I mean, actually that worked out all right. So we're okay. And he'll just stay right here. And what's nice about that is he's not in cover. If he had moved, he'd moved into cover, which would have been annoying. So now we have these wonderful different choices. What are we going to do? Do we just want to go against the harvester and just try and hammer on him? Or, <laughs> which I'm still not sure if that's a great idea. Do we take out like this skin fetch that's behind us, this bone fetch that's there? Uh, well, the bone fetch will respawn because I don't have any tactics in my hands. I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping maybe just to go against that harvester and soak these attacks for another round and then maybe try and take them out within two rounds. Maybe. We'll see. Starting that tactics phase, look at our hands. <laughs> we only have four cards between all four of us. <laughs> if we were playing Gears of War at this point, we'd be dead. That's another game you guys that I absolutely love. I'm hoping to do a playthrough of that really soon. I'm just in the midst of painting it. <laughs> uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with Sunny. I'm really hoping with drawing our five cards, we're going to get some real nice bomb cards again. We can maybe blow them up a second time, and that will kind of help us decide what we want to do. So everyone's going to draw up to five cards. Well, we didn't get exactly what I was looking for, but maybe it'll work. <laughs> Let's see. We'll start with Sunny. Looks like we're going to do a team effort again using our leader. We're going to use Frank, and we're going to use Sunny. Sunny's going to start off with two, four, five total bombs with one auto success. Frank's going to go ahead and be a spotter, and we're going to increase his strength by one, so he'll roll six dice. And our leader is going to use a breaching shot to play before an ally performs an attack to reduce the target's resistance to that attack to zero. So we only need seven successes minus the one auto success, six successes with six dice. We're rolling six dice, looking for six successes. We do have Henry in our location, so we can re-roll one of them. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Boom! Took off his left arm. So now his right and his left arm are toast. We only have to hit him two more times. We only have two cards in hand, so I am going to move myself up to here. And you're going to see why I'm going to do that. I am doing that in a second. Moving to Frank's turn, I think I'm going to have Frank try and shoot this guy point blank. He's not going to move. So because of that, he increases the strength of his bullet attack by one. Also, because he's a marksman, he can reduce the bullet resistance of this guy by one. So normally it is three, now it's two. So we need a total of eight successes. We have one auto success on this card, so that's going to be seven successes. We're rolling a total of six plus one, which is seven dice. And the nice thing is, if we destroy the skin fetch, it does not come back. That's why I decided it was worth doing this. 
We got one, two, three, four. Oh, that's terrible. And five, six. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. Almost enough, but not enough to take him out. Ugh. Well, I had a plan, and that plan is not working. So instead, I'm going to run. <laughs> and now, that's kind of crazy to think that I'm actually running towards the harvester as my way of running away, but I got to get away from this uh, skin fetch. For our combat specialist's turn, I think he's just going to go one, two. He's going to have to soak some attacks. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. He's got two skin fetches over there and the harvester. Each are going to be rolling two dice on him. I don't know, but we, we've got to protect these guys. So he's going to go ahead and move himself there. Finally, we're going to have our leader go. She's going to go ahead and use these rounds that I can't seem to say the name. <laughs> uh, she needs three successes on four dice. Let's at least get that bone fetch out of the way. Three successes. One, two, three, four. Nice. Now, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they spawn again. It spawns in location three. At least we hit that harvester one more time, but <laughs> I don't know, you guys. This could be bad. Let's go ahead and activate that one minion way up there. Oh, he's actually not going to get any additional. He's just going to move two. That's it. Now for the fun. This first skin fetch is going to come into here. And he gets no special ability. But he is going to attack uh, Rat for two damage. Let's see what he gets. We'll roll. We get uh, two fists. So that means Rat's going to have to discard two cards. <laughs> he's already down to three. Then this skin fetch is also going to move into this location. He's going to roll two dice. We're looking at three total damage. We're going to have Frank play some cover fire. So play after a monster attacks an ally to have its damage rounded down. So they'll have the three down to one. That means Rat will have to discard point blank. <laughs> He's got two cards left, you guys. Two cards left. Next, though, we have to activate this skin fetch. He'll move one. We'll roll. He gets an additional range. Oh, but the nice thing is he is not going to move, and they're in cover. So he'll only roll one die. He's going to attack Sunny. So he'll roll, and he does one point of damage to Sunny. Uh, yeah, Sunny will definitely die yeah, either one of these. Let's do the concussive device. He'll discard that one. And then last but not least, that harvester will attack. He'll roll. He gets an additional movement. He won't move. He is going to attack Rat for two damage. Or two dice, I mean. Let's see. He gets oh, three damage. That will, let's see. Can anybody do anything? Okay, I kept giving Frank a hard time. I take back everything that I say. He had two cover fires. I thought he only had one. He's going to play the second one. Play after a monster attacks an ally to have its damage. That will only do one damage to Rat. <laughs> He's alive, you guys. He's alive. Rat will go ahead and discard between the ribs. I thought for sure we were done for there. Now, I mean, all that would have done was flip our lucky coin face down and the harvester would have gotten one of his tokens back. But not having that happen is amazing. However, look at this. Look at this space. We've got two skin fetches and a harvester here. It's ripe for having our demolition expert to chuck a bunch of grenades in there again. The problem is, is that's also going to hit Rat. <sighs> So I don't know exactly what we're going to do this next round, but I am feeling more hopeful than I thought I was going to. <laughs> let's go ahead and jump into that next round. Moving to that tactics phase, let's see, three, four, five. We had a total of five cards left between all of us. <laughs> let's definitely have Frank go first because he does have those abilities where he can attack range. And what's really nice is that he, is, uh, he cannot move and then actually increase his strength against that harvester. That might be helpful. Let's have everyone draw up to five cards. Well, it looks like Sonny is not in the mood to throw any more grenades. He's kind of used up everything that he's got. <laughs> Look at this. Fist, 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 fist. Yeah, he's got one grenade card. So I think we're going to leave this up to Frank. And maybe, maybe our combat specialist can do something. I mean, look at this. He's got six, seven, eight, nine. He can roll a ton of dice. I don't know. Let's see what we want to do. Take a look at Frank's hand. Do you see this? It stinks. It totally stinks. I was hoping I can do a big shot with him. No. I've got, what, six dice maybe with one attack and one reroll? Yeah. I'm not going to have him do anything. I'm going to actually just have our combat specialist and Moxie both try and take a shot at the harvester. If they both can do this, we actually can win this game. Moxie's going to go ahead and play this for Rat during his turn. Play before an ally performs an attack. 
to reduce the target's resistance to that, to that attack to zero. And that means Rat can do a physical attack or a, you know, um, a punching attack, and he doesn't have to get through the five defense or five resistance. He just needs seven total successes. Thanks for the breaching shot, Moxie. We're going to use both of these cards looking at a total of eight dice with two auto successes. So normally we need seven. We only need five successes on eight dice. And a reroll thanks to Henry being close to us. Five successes on eight dice. We can do this. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. We just hit the third time on that harvester. We just took off half the bones on his left leg. <laughs> Let's see what we can do to take him out completely. Looking at Sonny's hand, his hand is a load of poo. <laughs> he only has, what, look at that, all of that um, uh, combat, close combat attack, not that helpful. So we're not going to have him do anything either. We're going to move right to Moxie's turn. We're going to have Frank play the slow and the dead. Play before an ally performs a bullet attack to increase their attack strength by two or by three if that monster's speed is one or less. Well, the harvester speed is zero, so he's going to increase her attack by three. She's going to use her double ot. She's rolling a total of eight dice. She's going to need to get a total of seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven successes on eight dice. Oh, with one reroll. We need eleven successes on eight dice. Oh, this is risky. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We can reroll one if we get a two. We just won the game. 10, 11. <laughs> that is 11 damage. 7 plus 4 is 11. That takes this out. And the harvester has just been blown to bits. And he's off in some sort of portal. <laughs> oh my gosh. I did not think we had a chance. Here we have our after action report, Abe's Log. I don't know if I believe in fate and all that jazz, but... I do know that if we had gotten here even an hour later, it would have been too late. Fighting just the newly formed avatar of the Harvester was nearly impossible. Had it been able to connect to the rest of the bone mass that the Fetches had prepared, not a chance. Destroying it not only took out all of the Fetches that it had been animating, but the whole damn spectral world that we were fighting in. It just kind of unraveled around us blowing away like mist until we found ourselves standing in the hospital basement. A single set of bloody bones was on the floor, wrapped in a burial shroud that burned faintly with a blue fire. We buried the doctor's bones, and Patty said a few words over him. It was the best we could do, and a damn sight better than what the harvester's victims had received. Still, it's not like the poor guy could be blamed for what the shroud turned him into. I do wish we could have done something for all those remains that the Harvester had gathered and mixed together, but they vanished with the moonlit world that it had created. Division Zero sent in a containment team to deal with the grasping shroud. I hope they figure out a way to destroy it, but I'm not holding my breath. We collapsed the abandoned hospital when they were done, just in case, and afterwards headed into town for drinks in the company of the living. I'd never been so grateful for a beer and a song in my life. Life is more fragile than we like to admit sometimes, but that's part of what makes it so sweet. Well, I'm not really sure what to say here, you guys, other than I had an absolute blast playing these three scenarios together. So much fun. I can't recommend this game enough. Top 10, easy for me. It is so much fun, the card play, the dice, having the different uh, probabilities of successes. And I mean, that was just one set of three scenarios. So the base game comes with two more sets of three scenarios. And then I have two, the two expansions as well. And each of those come with three scenarios. And I think they have a couple one-off scenarios as well. There's so much here. I've actually painted this entire game. This is the second game I've painted in, in uh, entire, uh, the entirety of it. So that uh, obviously means I like it. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to do another playthrough. Let me know what you guys think. Which, another, which of the next set do you want to see? I'm thinking the African expansion, uh, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Regardless, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you at the next stop.